All right, are we live? Hello? 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 All right, I think we're here, we're live, and oh my goodness, man. I'm so freaking tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just realized some things. I realized some stuff. Oh. It occurred to me that if I <laughs> did the math just a few minutes ago, it's like, man, I want to get on YouTube. I want to do things on YouTube. It's going to be great. And I realized that, um, Oh, <laughs> if I if I put out a every time I put out a video, um, so so I have one video that's almost reached a thousand views, and it looks like it's growing exponentially. So it looks like it's going to keep growing. Um, but basically, I, I was thinking about it, and it was like, if I create a video. Even if I've created a video every day, it's like each video it's going to take four months, and that video is going to gain a thousand a thousand views is like three bucks in ad ad money. It's going to be three bucks a month. Four months later, so each video will be three dollars. Five months from now. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I want to. <laughs> I want to make YouTube, I want to be a YouTuber, I want to make YouTube videos. Oh, it's too funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, it's really, it's just really funny. It's like, what the heck? I'm wearing myself out, man. I'm wearing myself out. So basically, I probably should, should interview again just start interviewing again oh it's killing me it's killing me oh I feel like it's been so many years practicing for interviews and just interviewing again and again and again it's like oh oh <laughs> I don't know I don't know I don't know what what to even say I think or do I don't know anymore I would have to make like purely um, entertaining videos or something. But I want to make videos about programming. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. It's like, it just takes so much time, all this stuff. <sighs> Things I'd like to do. It takes time. It's a lot of time. I feel like a crazy person, you know? Trying to do the things that I do. Oh, man. Oh, man. Shucks, you know? Shucks. Ah. Oh. Tired, man. I'm tired. Um, yes, yeah, terrible. This is so bad. Because <laughs> then I go through all these interviews and I get a job and it pays well and all that. But then I can actually work that job. And it's like, be doing something else, something I really want to be doing. This is killing me. I don't even know what I want to do anymore. I'm so, like, just worn out. Oh, my brain, my own mind. Just freaking jousting with myself regularly. 
It's killing me, man. It's killing me. I don't know what to think anymore. It's terrible too, because I have so much time to do nothing but think about. <laughs> I got nothing to think about. Just. Uh, slowly going insane. <laughs> slowly going insane. <laughs> it's great. It's perfect. It's just what I wanted. Exactly the way to live life. Just oh. Oh. So anyway, I could put away it for a moment. Could take a break from like I don't know <laughs> mind-numbing frustrations and just go like do some pro. I want to program it. I haven't programmed. I just want to program something. Just, just, just do something. Just do something, you know? Let's program something. A couple of eco problems. Um, yeah, I think design questions is what I have to focus on if I really wanted to focus on interviewing. It's like I really, I really, I figured out all the, all these questions. It's not really, almost not worth going into at all. Got the idea. Got it. I figured it out. It's all right. It's all system design questions now, I guess. And um, I want to build my own website, but that's the problem. Is it's like, well, I'm so conflicted. I feel like I really need a new job, but I also want to build something of my own for once. Oh, the struggle, the struggle. Wow, there's nobody watching. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I guess people. Oh, that's how it is, right? I've got better things to do. Take time. Oh, just. Oh. What a world we live in, man. What a world we live in. I don't know anymore. I don't know. I feel like I should just go to sleep. I don't know, I'll do one problem. I'll just do one one relatively straightforward problem. See how that goes. Shouldn't be too bad. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's what I want to do. Alright, um... My soul, man. My freaking soul. It's like, oh... Just... I got the love of God. <laughs> got the love of God. Solution, frequency. Alright, let's do it. I hope, I hope they support closure. I'm going to be sad if we get in here and they don't even have closure in here they don't even have closure in here you gotta be kidding me <laughs> you're kidding me are you serious what no closure oh my goodness I'm so disappointed <laughs> Oh. 
They don't even have closure. Why? <laughs> no. Come on, man. Uh, leak code doesn't have closure. Huh. Guess we're going to hacker rank. Can we? Uh, one answer. Check out for closure. So let me go ahead and change my title. The hacker rank has it. Uh, all right. second everybody okay there's no one watching <laughs> so never mind uh, never mind then um, okay so let's close the code then go on a hacker rank Uno momento. Asking me difficult questions here. Uh... Oh boy. They don't have closure here, are you kidding me? Hold on a second. Oh, it's there, yes! Goose! Oh, 
this is kind of fun. It's like bragging. Who <laughs> doesn't like bragging? <laughs> Too bad you guys can't see this work on here. I should know what that is now. Uh, I know what Octave is too. Cool. Hold on, friends. This is going to take a minute. This is going to take a minute. Sweet. Hmm. Um. Wow. Huh. Interesting. They've updated their, their jobs here. Cool. Nice. Sorry, I'm just browsing. Very cool. Anyway, um, uh, they don't have one for, uh, did the interview prep kit here, um, I don't have a second screen for my chat either. It's kind of awkward. Um, I guess we'll just pick. So let me. We should be okay to do this. Let me do this. Um, okay. Algorithms. Let's go like medium. Let's pick a random medium question. Okay. And let's do this in closure. Right. That's okay. Please tell me they have closure. Awesome. All right. Cool. Cool. Um. should be interesting. And nobody in chat. Maybe I can pull up the chat on my phone. Nah, it's fine. Alright, so David has several containers, each with a number of balls in it. He has just enough containers to sort each type of... Oh, I need to change my... I do need to change one more thing. Longer include. 
Forger. We're no longer in uh, Hacker Rank. Going, brother. Hey, what's up, UKK? Welcome, welcome back. Hello, hello. How are things? How are you? Hey, man. I um, I'm glad you popped in and said hello. I uh, I was kind of like, I was getting lonely. <laughs> I was getting lonely. <laughs> Had kind of a kind of a, not a long day, but oh, no, oh, okay, not a long day, but just like I don't know. I don't even know. I'm like. Oh, it's too many, too much stress, too much stuff going on. Lost a lot of money in the stock market, so my my backup plan was like, look, if things go south, you have a lot of money, you could like take a year off of work until you find a new job. But I lost a lot, so now I'm like, oh, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Been a while since I watch your streams. I was putting in some overtime. Wow. You were putting in overtime at your job? Or does that mean, or did I misinterpret, misunderstand? But yeah, man, I appreciate I appreciate you watching my streams. I do. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's like I feel good with at least one person watching. I, feel, I don't feel like I'm just talking to myself. Um, so thank you for that. And um, yeah, man, my mind has been all over the place. I meant today. Oh, today you put in overtime. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully whatever the project. I think you mentioned you were working on. I think um, two-factor authentication. Started dating a girl three months ago, so been busy. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good, man. No, don't don't feel don't feel obligated to watch me. Uh, certainly not. Certainly not. Though I do appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, man, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I think we talked about that. That yeah, you found you found a virgin, and a woman, a woman who's got similar values. Similar value. More important that she has similar values than being a virgin. Although it's the, to, to me, it's super important because it's like, you know, it's not just saying that you have the same values. It's like proof. But um. Anyway, sorry. It's kind of an awkward thing to to say, but um. Um. That's good. I'm really glad. For, I'm glad. Glad. Um, yeah, man. Forgive me. I'm like <laughs> not on the verge of tears. I've just been. I've been really sad lately. And uh, I think I mentioned I brought my my dad home from the hospital recently. So I'm sad. But not not always. I don't have to be sad. But I'm like just I don't know. Lost stresses. I guess. Better family for Thanksgiving as well. Decent people. Hey, very nice. Very good. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when, when you're ready, you've got the, the next steps, you know. I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should get into all that. But basically, it's like the way, <laughs> the way I've been envisioning for myself is like as soon as I'm ready, it's like, all right, get married, <laughs> have kids. And and the reason the reason why I've been thinking that lately is because of um, I, re I recently learned how are things with you, um, a bit stressful, <laughs> a bit stressful. My brain is like I'm gonna, I'm gonna collapse, but I'm like just, oh, yeah, I'll go I'll go into it in a second. But I um, but I found I found that um, with men, the older you are, the more likely it is that there could be a genetic mutation. Um, in the child from in the, from the sperm, and uh, same thing with the with your with your wife. Um, if she's older as well, then when you have a child, there's a higher risk of genetic mutation. And I happen to find videos from a fellow who, um, you know, he sort of finds people who have um, like d disorders, disabilities, and he talks to them, and he has. You know, he puts him on camera and he and he says, you know, this is my new friend, and they talk and um, they kind of chat a bit, and it's very interesting. Um, and I'm sort of 
sort of a kind of a gift to the world that that he does this thing and um but i thought about it and it was like man i would feel really guilty if i waited a long time to have kids and then my child ended up with a disorder like that because i waited so much time and i thought i should probably get a move on as soon as possible talked about marriage we decided sometime in 2021 would be appropriate we'd be by 28 then perfect there you go there you go perfect perfect that sounds good very good let's see 2021 a couple of years yeah two years i think is good two years i think is, is reasonable right and it's you'd be in the range where at that time not, neither of you would be in any any wouldn't be incurring the um was it threat threat of of, of genetic mutation that, that's basically what, what i'm getting at there's this threat of genetic mutation um which is really really rough thing for 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 a kid to have i mean not not that it's not the end of the world but i think it's if you can avoid it you should do everything within your power to do so i think i mentioned i mean, and oh yeah so so where my has my mind been? It's been freaking all over the place. I can't even I can't even write down all the stuff. Um, sorry, to, but um, I feel bad like switching back and forth, but it's okay. Sorry, it's, it's, it's I guess this is the nature of the conversation. It's, it's just how it is. Um, but no, that sounds great, man. That sounds fantastic. It sounds like a serious, solid plan. Um, and it's very good that you, you met her parents. That's a huge, huge deal. You know, you got to know. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I've, I've become of like a born again Christian, and right, and I'm learning that you know we live in a fallen state, a fallen world, and the heart of man. Is, excuse me. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, the heart of man is perpetually wicked. Um, was it the imaginations of man is evil continuously so undoubtedly there's going to be stuff that yourself and your wife have from the past that have affected and shaped your personalities and it's better to find out what those things are the sort of skeletons in the closet so to speak find out what those things are get it out in the open address it before you get married and have kids I would suggest that. Um, I've mentioned that. That's another thing that I sort of learned recently about. Um, not that I'm trying to like rock the boat with your <laughs> your girlfriend, <laughs> cause you to rock the boat, but it is it is a real thing. Um, you know, there's been there's been stories of like women will get married to their husband, have a child, and then decide okay, as soon as they have the child, they want to get a divorce. And it's like, why is this happening? What's going on? Like, why is she losing her mind? Um, and I don't remember exactly why. It had something to do with well, she was sort of sort of abused as a kid, and something about it, you know, it, it triggered her to when she, when, she, when she actually had a child, it just really messed her up. And she wasn't like super attached to the child either. Like she, like she, she almost, almost like she wanted to like undo having a kid which is like just so wild but by the way this story comes from one of um if you know who stefan molyneux is he he interviewed a woman who was talking about all this and it's kind of really awkward for me to to give it to you secondhand the way that i have because there's a lot of details involved and it's like it was like a two-hour discussion the two of them were having about this woman um he was talking to her about this but I don't really want to go into too much detail about that story, other than it is a real thing that if you don't really, if 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 you have not dealt with the skeletons in the closet, they can come back in a pretty ugly way when, once you have kids, and it's kind of rough on the kids, which is kind of the, the reason why I bring it up is that you really want to make sure everything's smoothed out, you know, everything's out in the open, talked about, addressed. You know, if you need to see see some some a professional about something may have happened, make sure you do it. That kind of thing, that kind of stuff. I don't know why I'm telling you all that. It just <laughs> came to my mind. It's like that's something I would I would I'd, I'd pay attention to. Um, well, that's good. And then so, 
where my mind has been, forget it, it's like, it's a, it's such a mess, I, I, uh, so my dad is very sick, and I love my dad, and I think about it a lot, and, you know, I'm kind of, like, coming to terms with, you know, he's, 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 he's only got maybe a year or two left, um, and so that's been kind of my mind, and then also, I agree, it takes a while to get to know someone, yeah, yeah, it takes a while, and, and it's it's not even just that it takes a while. It's like you gotta ask the hard questions. You know, you gotta ask like, hey, you know, like, did you sleep with someone before me? Hey, do you have a kid that I don't know about? Hey, is there do you have a husband I don't know about? Hey, did your parents ever abuse you? Hey, did you ever have any trauma growing up? Like, things like that. Like they're hard questions to ask, but you gotta just flat out ask them because if you don't know, it can come back. In the, in the in the future, she's a virgin. Her parents wanted assurances that the end goal would be to marry her. Nice, there you go, fantastic. That's really encouraging. That's very good. It's very positive. Wow, she stayed she stayed tw- uh, a virgin twenty six years. Or I guess it would be more like twelve years. Or so, or what, what, what was it? How old would you be if she was eighteen? Is the legal age? Would be eight years. Hallelujah, that's great. Hey, how's it going, Prince Poker? Welcome back. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. How are things? How are you? So, I um, yeah, I'd I'd, I'd mention bring that up. That's that's good. It's good. It's good to get the skeleton. Obviously, we do it slowly and and as in you know, like it's not something you want to like. I am her first boyfriend. Wow, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Wow, that's a, like a miracle from from from. From my perspective, that's amazing. Very good. Very good. Um, she was busy with school and her career. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Although, that's actually still kind of surprising because, you know, there's a lot of temptations at school. That's like, well, very good. Very good. Parents were strict. Yeah, that's fantastic. I... I almost can't believe it. I'm sorry. I, don't, I just, I'm like, it's so, it's like, it's, well, I guess it is what it is. It is what it is. People are different, you know. I, I, the world, the world that I grew up in and the world that I experienced, I guess, I guess part of it too is my own sins, you know, is if, if I'm, if I'm sort of living in sin, then I'm going to surround myself with sort of similar people and, and I won't necessarily meet too many folks who are like trying to do things the right way. So I guess that's another reason, some sort of bias, you know, I'm sort of looking through colored lenses in my in my view. I guess that's why it seems so so miraculous to me. Um, it probably has more to do with my own soul, really, than, 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 than reality, I think, I guess. I hope, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> um, but, um... My mind has been in a weird place lately. It's been like talking about things to think about. I've been thinking about, you know, right? Like, so you've got these young kids who have these these mutations, these genetic diseases, and I was thinking about like, okay, what are possible ways to cure and combat and and, and deal with genetic these genetic diseases? And there's at least two ideas I could think of right off the bat that I would be really 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 be great if I could work on it but I don't even know how or when or what to do and I've got all kinds of other stuff in the pipes already but one of the one thing is like um you know if you could figure out which part of the body uh is responsible for addressing whatever particular mutation there might be um because your body does fix these things naturally um I hear your brother. Did not think such a girl would exist at my age, but they do, which is very rare. Okay, so you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that is, like, <laughs> it's like a miracle. It's really, yeah, it's very special. Very special. Very special. Um, what was I saying? So, obviously the first, th- well, there's really three solutions. The first one is prevention. It's like, okay, try to make sure if and when you have children to do it early 
so that way both parties are not contributing any kind of like potential risk factors. That's the easiest solution to prevent these kinds of mutations, these, these genetic diseases. Um, the other one is the body does actually fight this stuff on some level. And so you could, quote unquote, supercharge whatever part of the body would address that particular mutation. So you'd have to identify the mutation and then identify something that, and that's natural that combats it. And then you got to find a way to like supercharge that part of the body in the same way that like steroids make, give, makes your muscles bigger, right? By overloading a mechanism your body naturally has, you would overload this mechanism that would address that mutation. And you do that, um, you know, so you early identify in the child that they have this mutation, and then you give them this concoction that basically supercharges their natural, like, uh, mechanisms to basically correct the mutation while they're developing, while they're growing. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe you would have to keep them on kind of like a continuous diet of this sort of drug like thing, but at least they'd be, you know, they wouldn't ha um, suffer so de so dearly from the, the mutations they have. Um, that's a second idea, F and finally the third idea is actually to find a way to reprogram the genes, like directly find out what should the genome, what could the genome look like if it was corrected for this person, and then actually reprogram it um, at an early age and find a way to actually reprogram the, the cells in the body that are, that, are, that are sort of genetically damaged. And that seems like the hardest one to do. Um, but all three of those are possible solutions to, and I'm talking, these diseases are so, you know, I mean, like, you know, the child is deformed, and they, you know, a lot, a lot of times it, they, they can't function properly, and Sometimes it's like really, um, you know, like you just really feel bad for these 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 these, these poor parents and the poor children and the, their whole life is they're they're gonna have this. Well, you know, I mean the soul the soul is is, is there despite despite the physical form and the and sort of having like. Um, what do they call that, like uh, deformities and, and sort of crippled, being crippled and sort of being sort of the, the, the husk that is the body, it kind of, the soul kind of shines through it, something like that. It's like a stoic kind of idea um, that it's almost like the more broken the husk is, the more it shows the the soul, the greatness of the soul. Um, so there's another part of me that's like, well, maybe you shouldn't rob, rob, you know, this is God, how God decided to do it. Maybe you shouldn't try to rob, rob these people of this. But at the same time, it's like, no, they're suffering, you know, they're really suffering. And it's, it's le helping to alleviate the suffering, I think is worthwhile. Um, you would, you would be changing them somewhat, but, um, I still think it's a positive thing to try to do, but anyway, that's that's like my mind has been on that. Like it's you know technically it can be done, you know it can can be done these these different approaches, um, but it's definitely gonna have some challenges, and I don't think I have like the time or resources really to pursue that. And that's like just another <laughs> one of many things I'd like to pursue. I think I also mentioned, I'm like, oh, I want to build a, um, an investment firm because it's like, look, I got all these things that I want to do. If I build an investment firm, then I'll have the resources to do the other things. <laughs> and it's like, right, but how many, how much time is it going to take to build an investment firm? <laughs> it's like, when, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm super conflicted about everything. And then, and then what's the other one? It's like, but I don't even have time, enough time to do that. I got to go... I guess get another job or something and I've been kind of frustrated at my job unfortunately I told one of my coworkers I was going to leave like very soon but now I'm thinking about it it's like oh, where am I going to go I got to like go f apply somewhere else interview somewhere else and ah, 
sick of interviewing. I just, I, at the same time, I'm like, all right, if I want to have an investment firm, I got to market it. So what I got to do is I got to go build something that attracts a lot of attention and <laughs> then feed the attention to the investment firm so I can make money so then I can, I don't <laughs> sounds crazy I feel like it's going nuts but I've been learning I've decided to learn Clojure and Clojure script I was going to build a website that's like a forum type of thing that's just going to I don't know it would be like my personal website and put stuff on it and you know make like a store and make like a I'm sorry I'm, I'm so like I don't know it's just it's just because the problem is that it's like alright it's 9.30 at night. It's past my bedtime already. Where am I going to find the time to do all these things if I'm you know, basically spending 12 hours a day at my job? Because it's, it's roughly roughly three hours, not always, but two to three hour drive, round trip, and then I'm there for nine hours. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to have time to do any of this stuff. <laughs> it's just, it's painful. It's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I want to cry. <laughs> I want to cry. Not to mention, I want to spend time with my dad. I don't want to spend too much time crying, you know, complaining. I was going to make v- YouTube videos, because I thought if I make YouTube videos, then I could, I don't know, transition from one thing to the next. You know, it's like if you want to, like I was saying, you you got to somehow advertise your investment firm. It's like, well, if you make YouTube videos, then you can one thing into the other. But it's like, no... Uh, the amount of money that I'll make making YouTube, even if I make YouTube videos that people really want to watch, I'll get like four months from now. If I make a YouTube video now, which could take me, you know, I may, may be able to make one a day if I really push it. Four months from now, I'll make probably three dollars a month off that video. So it's like, <laughs> even if I did, if I was weren't crazy and did uh, a video every day for thirty days, that would be like. 900 bucks four months from now. Actually, that's pretty good. No, no, 90 bucks. I'm sorry. Three by 30. Yeah, 90 bucks. <laughs> 90 bucks a month, four months from now. That's not a lot of money. <laughs> uh, so basically, I have to like really up my game if I want to make YouTube videos. Like, I really have to be like, no, no, no. Can't just make any video. You gotta make a video that like you know people really are gonna watch. You gotta make something that like it's people want to watch it. It'll, it'll get attention. It'll be quality, something funny, something good, something like you can't. So that's like a depressing realization because I was like, oh yeah, man, I'll just make a whole bunch of different videos. It's like no, 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 no. it's not. You can't just. You're not gonna make any money doing that. Like you gotta make something almost explicitly, specifically entertaining, that, like, people want to watch it, um, and then you can make money doing that, it's like, oh, so, yeah, I don't know, I don't know anymore, I don't know anymore, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> just, what do I even do, what do I even do, I don't know, I don't know, Figure it, I gotta figure it out. What to do? It's a good idea. So yeah, I realize I'm just kind of like word vomit stuff, but I got so many things in my mind. Uh, I don't know, man. And the thing is terrible too. Is like, okay, I want to go start my own firm. That's great, but um. You can't really do that if you're working for another company because if you're working for somebody like you're under contract like you got to be focused on your job you know even if I'm working at like a startup like it's like you're focused on the startup the startup like you're not really supposed to be detracting your time to something else so TLDR my head kind of hurts thinking about all, all the stuff to do to work on Meanwhile, meanwhile, I've got all these thoughts flowing in my head, and I'm spending 11 hours a day, 12 hours a day, doing something 
totally unrelated, or almost unrelated. It's killing me. It's killing me. I don't know. I could, I could even consider, like, um, just flat out pitching a startup idea and building that. Um, although that's, like, <laughs> gotta come up with something that I don't mind sort of giving away just to make enough money to move to the next thing I don't know man <laughs> I don't know man <laughs> uh, what do you even do what do I even do So, so here's another idea, right? I could, I could, I could um, work at a startup, right? Interview, work at a startup, and make YouTube videos, like go on, get on that YouTube video grind while I'm working at that startup. Oh, it's gonna suck. It's like so much effort to go go interview and, and get the job and. It takes time. I'll probably be out there there like another two years, right? But but I'll have enough pay to like really. I mean, I could, you know, like I said, I'm trying to have a fan. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh, oh. It's killing me, man. What what am I gonna do? I'm gonna start a family with uh, at 27 soon. The end of this month will be 27 two years start well I could do that 29 I'll be starting a family but also starting to build my quote unquote my dreams work on my dreams I don't know man I'm losing my mind it's kind of Reddit you got two remote jobs you make it 185 hours total from both jobs <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> that's fantastic the job I'm looking at right now is is pretty good it's remote. It would be remote. Oh, yeah, working on a startup. But, like, I feel like it's different when you're at, like, a small startup because, like, you really got to be, like, put in the time. Like, the job I have currently, I actually might be able to finagle working remotely with this job um, if they really don't want to hire someone else. Like, if I tell them I'm, like, real serious about leaving, which I, I am, although, like, it's kind of backwards right now. <laughs> I don't think I really want to do that though. It's like, that's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> it's like, I technically, technically could do the job I do right now remotely, but it's just not. I don't know. I, I talked. I talked to my coworker, one of my coworkers, about it, and he was like, "No, nah, I don't think so. I don't think it's just really good, good job to do remotely." Um, the one I do it right now, which is also one of the reasons why I'm thinking about quitting, because it's like. Oh, it's so much better if you work remotely. Like it's just, it's it's. I'm I'm, I'm freaking doing my two to three hours a day, like driving is, is soul sucking. And then on top of it, like you get two remote jobs. That's hysterical. But yeah, some jobs are like you just need to be available. Like it's not really it's not really so much that they need need you working on something. They just need you to be available for something. Um, in which case, you can do a bunch of jobs at the same time. You do one job where you're working on stuff, and then the other job is like, oh, you know, you just need to pay attention for a few minutes. And like, okay, we need your expertise. Like, all right, I'm here. And then on to the next thing. But um, I don't know. Maybe I should look into. Well, you know what? I do actually like the idea of of making YouTube videos, but I kind of got to figure out a way to like be a little more serious about it. I guess like make videos that I know people really want to want to see things a little more like you know because it because it takes time to put them together and like I, i've been lately i've just been kind of spewing you know working on any idea that comes to mind but it's like maybe be a little more judicious about 
which things I actually create a video about. Because there are some things I think people would want to see, like, you know, if I want to explain the um, the Canute, the Newth Morse Pratt algorithm, right? Like, I have a pretty good explanation for that. Like, you know, on, on Wikipedia, it's kind of shoddy the explanation. Um, I can I can explain it. Um, you know, I come across certain things here and there online that I think are interesting that I sort of like I could explain, like. Um, like monads in, in functional programming. It's like, what's, what the heck is a monad? You know, I could explain that. I think that would have some value. People would, would actually want to want to see that. Um, and I think I mentioned also, like, yeah, I can get into more detail about, like, you know, how did I get the on-site interview at Google? Like, how did that happen? You know, I can go through the whole process, a video about that. I think people would appreciate Um like, there are things that I can do, so I kind of got to, like, because I, I get ideas for stuff, but, like, it, it just it takes time, and I just, I don't know, I get I get to this point where I just, I just don't have the time, and I'm tired, and I want to do it, I'm like, I just want to kind of go to my job, man, I don't know, I think, I think that's maybe not a bad plan, though, like, go, go get another job, and then um, I could make YouTube videos on the side and fo- really focus on these two things and think about, like, you know, videos that would do pretty well, well enough where I'd make more than, like, $3 a month, you know, four or five months later. That's, like, kind of kind of brutally low amount. Although I should, I should, I should keep in mind, though, like, the gauge I'm using is kind of off because if I really did start making like a lot of videos, um, your subscriber count starts going up, and then once your subscriber count starts going up, then your the traction each video gets initially starts going up a lot, which actually gives you even more momentum. So actually, if I'm if more I'm thinking about it, it's like I'm in a better spot than I realized because YouTube you gather momentum on YouTube. So it wouldn't be take that much time at all, I think, to really get, get going. I don't think I need, I would, I think, I think I'm actually, in a, I think $3 a month, four months later is the incorrect way to look at it. I think it's, if I gather enough momentum, then I can start making enough where I can, I can shift to YouTube instead of like looking for jobs and trying to get hired and all of that. And then I can shift to like whatever projects I want to work on. I think that's a better a better approach. I don't think that would take that much time, actually. If I'm really if I'm really be if I really buckle down, so maybe I should just keep ch- churning out random videos and just see what does does best and start focusing on the things that do better. Maybe maybe I'm being a little too pessimistic here, getting all kind of all all messed up. See, it's good to do math, you know. <laughs> <laughs> to do math, if you don't do the math, it messes you up. If you do it wrong, if you make the use the wrong assumptions, sudden suddenly my day just got that much better. Um, let me let me go ahead and I was going to um, try to solve this problem in Clojure because I think I mentioned I'm I'm looking to build a website in Clojure. Use Clojure and Clojure Script to Clojure for the back end. I even have the machine now. The machine I have the networking card, so I have a. I, have a, I bought a, a tower from uh, uh, Newegg.com, and I bought a an old Dell tower, and I bought a wireless networking card, so I can attach that. So now I guess so I can remote in from this machine, and you know do what I got to do, and also connect to the internet wirelessly. Um, I'll probably once I'm once I have a website on there, I'll probably connect, uh, get a hard wire, but uh, move move it probably upstairs, get a hard wire, but um, and then then I can remote in from here, so I don't have to be, in you know I can I can sort of work on it wherever I want, um, but uh, is the hard the wires sorry the wire is in a different spot of the house, it's the hard the hard wire, so I would have to actually like remote into that machine to work on it on the website on, to uh, deploy the website deploy changes and then what I can do is um, so then I got Arch Linux installed and then I got to install a networking card and then 
that was pretty cool also installing Arch Linux that was an interesting experience on uh, on a machine that was originally intended for Windows um, and yeah I could build a website and build a server and um, or, or rather build the website and then build the uh, the back end put the back end on that machine run it on that machine let the world connect to it and you know I've got my own website and um, that'd be cool and I could document all of that you know doing that and use Clojure script for the front end Clojure for the back end and yeah and I think I'm gonna start applying for for Clojure jobs you know <laughs> start start looking to get into a Clojure start, uh, startup I think working on a product service would pay off more and using YouTube as a means to sell advertise the product service. Yeah, I think so too. That's exactly, I think, I agree. I think that's really what I want to do ultimately is I want to build build the presence on YouTube and then use that as like a marketing. That was kind of my original intention for building a, a Twitch channel, one of them. I think I've mentioned that in the past that like I really wanted to use it for like marketing, I guess. But I realize now like um, the way... I guess advertising works the way the internet works. It's like you kind of gotta like I don't know you you gotta get like exposure. You know it's like it's not really I don't know it's it's a little more nuanced than just like putting in time. You know <laughs> which I guess is kind of obvious because it's like well you know when was the last time you got hired just to show up? <laughs> like <laughs> it's a little more than just showing up typically. Um, moved in with your dad. Yes, I did. Yeah, like, like I said, we, he, he came back from the hospital, and um, that actually wasn't the original impetus for moving in with him. But, um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be here for a while, uh, probably a year or two, and then um, we'll see we'll see what what happens after, after a year or two. But, yeah, I'll be with him. And, uh, yeah, it's... Um, you know we're sharing sharing the rent, so it's splitting it. It's a house, so it's not it's not bad. Um, I'll also be here with my sister, so it'll be the rent will be split three ways. So it's like pretty inexpensive to live here, which is really good because, like I said, I just lost a bunch of money in the stock market. <laughs> I made a thousand dollars in one day, but I lost a lot more than that over the past uh, few months. And uh, still kind of figuring out like how to trade high risk, high risk trades. I am still interested in, in, in creating a, a hedge fund, but I think what I'm going to do is split it into three tiers now. One is going to be like super safe, like not just safe, but like really safe. Like we're talking, you know, I think the bonds market is like relatively safe, like maybe two percent a year <laughs> gains. Like you're not going to lose money. You definitely make money, but not gonna be a lot of money then like the medium level is like relatively safe which you could probably get like seven percent a year and then and then like unsafe i'm probably just gonna lose your money <laughs> let's not even talk about <laughs> how much you're gonna make if you really got the the balls for the unsafe one well we can do it <laughs> there's, the, there's the there's the red button <laughs> you could <can> press <laughs> Uh, which is what I'll probably be putting my, my, a lot of my money in, which, because I like, I don't know, man, I like having fun, I like, I like having, uh, high, high risk, high reward, I like making a thousand dollars in a day, it's a good, it's a good time, it's a good time, trading, but yeah, dude, that's wild, 185 dollars an hour working two remote jobs, is that, is that a thousand, yeah, that's over a thousand a day, that's wild, <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> and and meanwhile, we're t I'm talking about all this stuff, and it's like people people are so different from each other. There there was some guy who was talking about you know he was a trader, um, I guess like he came from Argentina or something, and he just like did nothing but hustle because he didn't go to university, didn't do anything. He just went like straight to 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 like some firm and worked there for free as an intern. And then got into trading, and I think he, uh, how, I don't know how he did that exactly, but he basically ended up making like a million dollars 
when he was 25. And I'm like, man, I'm really proud of myself for making a thousand dollars. Like a million dollars. Holy smokes. Um, I have to say, the markets are so insanely volatile that you you could do that. I mean, if you like, you could you could make a few million on like almost nothing. You know, a few thousand dollars you could turn into a few million if you if you play it correctly in the markets. Um, I've noticed it's like insanely volatile the, mar- the these markets, and yeah, you can make like ten times your money in a week. It's like that's nuts. That is just you do that twice with with ten grand and yeah you're a millionaire that's it done make two two big trades and you're a millionaire that's like that's unbelievable yeah can be done can be done why don't I just do that why don't I just take every every single time I have a thousand dollars left over just just Risk it all, ten to one. <laughs> Just eventually, eventually, I gotta get two in a row. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, a thousand dollars will only give you a uh, hundred thousand, not a million. But ten thousand will give you a million. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to ramble on about trading and the and the and the wild profits you can make. Um, actually, I should go to sleep. I, I said I was gonna look at this problem, but I'm, I'm just I'm just rambling. I just I just want to talk about these problems and stuff to think about. And, and, um, we can at least read the problem. I should yeah, I should practice. I should practice closure. This would be good. This would be good. Um. Okay, what are they what are they asking? What are they asking? Let's see if we can just come up with again th- theory what what a solution would look like and then we can code it code it another time. We'll come back to the enclosure. David has several containers, each with a number of balls in it. He just he has just enough containers to sort each type of ball he has in its own container. David wants to sort the balls using his sort method. As an example, David has n equals two containers and two different types of balls, both of which are numbered from zero to n minus one equals one. The distribution of ball types per container described by an n by n matrix of integers, for example, consider the following diagram for m, m container type, m1423. All right, so he's got two containers, two different types of balls, and you can number them 0 to n minus 1. Okay, fine. And then two containers, two different types of balls. The distribution of ball types per container are described by an n by n matrix of integers. Um, the distribution of... Oh, okay. I think I understand. So, like, the first... Okay, so m container type. So, the first container would contain... Uh, oh, I see, I see. So, so the zeroth container, container zero, for type zero would have, maybe M M would be 1, you evaluate that and you get M is 1. So you get 1, one 0 and it's container 0. And then if M is like 4 when container 0 and type is 1, then you have 4. Okay, understood. For example, consider the following diagram for M equals 1, 4, 2, 3. So that would be 0, 0, 1, 4. And then in the other container, 0 we have 2 and then 1 we have 3. Okay, that makes sense. Understood. Single operation, David can swap two balls located in different containers. So you could swap two balls. So that would be like for the matrix, you would, um, if you swap two balls, you have container I, container J, and then they'd be the same. No, they're different types. So it could even be T1 and T2. And you would increment... Um, so the swap would be, oh boy, all right, I'm going to whip this guy out here. So you have like M of I, say T1, and then M of J, T2, 
and when you swap, you actually increment, you get m of i t1 minus 1, right? And so you lose that this ball, but m of i t2 gains a ball, and the other ball, and then this m of j t2 or t1 uh, excuse me no, no, no uh, is that right? yeah, there's there's an addition and a subtraction so it affects four different spots in the matrix that's what I'm getting at, because the first container loses one type of ball but gains another type of ball and the other container does the same thing it would symmetrically right it would lose it would gain this t1 but lose t2 yeah that's not like the most obvious it's like i mean it's not it's it's so, sort of trivial but it's also not like um too obvious. Uh, okay, well, let's just say organizing containers of balls. Oh, no, no, go back. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Um, Right, so that's what would happen to your matrix when you perform a swap. Got it. Um, so now the question is, so that's a single operation. So, so M of I, T sub 1, would gain a ball, or lose it, let's say it would, it would lose a ball, and then M of I, T sub 2, gains a ball, and then vice versa, m of j, t sub 1, would gain a ball, and then m of, I, m of j, t sub 2, would lose a ball. Something like that. There's, yes, four, 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 two additions and two subtractions that occur in the, in the matrix. Four different positions of the matrix are, are operated on per swap. Okay, fine. To fix a single swap operation. Got it. David wants to perform some number of swap operations such that each container contains only balls of the same type. Okay, each container contains only balls of the same type. Interesting. No two balls of the same type are located in different containers. No two balls of the same type are located in different containers. So basically, he wants to move all, he wants to make the certain sort of uh, uniqueness or, or, or equivalence class of these balls where each container contains all of the balls of a certain type and only the balls of that type. Yeah. So there's a kind of a permutation of like, so there's, there's, a few different permutations that are possible, but um, we want to swap to at least one of these such permutations where given a container, there's exactly one type of ball that's contained in that container, and that's the only ball that you find in that container, and it contains all the balls of that type in that container, amongst all the containers, all the balls that are available. Interesting. Okay, that's fine. Form Q queries, where each query is in the form of a matrix M. For each query, print possible on a new line if David can satisfy the conditions above for the given matrix. Otherwise, print impossible. All right, so we got to figure out if it's even possible. So we don't really, we're not even trying to necessarily do this each time. We're just trying to figure out is it possible to do this um, given some configuration of balls. And I think the only conditions that it would be not possible 
is if you have an odd number of balls, I think. Because if you have an odd number of balls, the problem you run into, well, I think there's a, f yeah, you gotta figure out the, there's a general, there's a sort of a generalizable way to show if it's not possible or not possible, possible or not possible. But I think it's gonna be, um, for instance, if you have one, 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 or even, well, let's see. I think it, I think your container can be empty, right? If it's, excuse me, let's see if it's ever empty. Yeah, it can be empty, uh, the container. So, actually, uh, it doesn't matter if it's odd or even. It matters if it matters if. Oh man, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard. I can think about this some more. If the ball, if there's, if you have a, if you have two ones in, in, a, in a container and then a one in a second container, that won't work. It's not because it's odd, it's because there's an even number of one container and an odd number in another container. To get that one... Or even, you could, you could even... Well, yeah, odd even. It's really just if any container contains an odd number of these balls. Mm, it's not, no, no, it's not an odd number. No, no, the issue is that the, the, num the balls that you want to swap it with, if there was two ones and a zero in one container, and then a one in one container, you could swap the zero with the one, and you'll be in good shape. Um, so it seems that the, the balls that you want to swap with if there's an odd number, or if there's a surplus, a difference, so it's not odd or even, it's like, if you've got a 1-1 one, one in, in one bucket, 1-1-0, one, one, and then you've got 1-1 one, one in the other bucket, you can only swap one, of, you can only swap the zero with one other ball. So actually, it's really an issue of, for any particular container, you know, zero through n different types that are in that container already, how many other things are there? And if the other things exceed the number of, or it's not equal to, actually it's not even exceed, it's just, is, or, or is, is not equal to the total number of balls in the other containers that you need to swap with, then it'll be impossible or it'll be impossible for that particular type, for that particular container. So then you've got to try all the different possible... So you can try all the different combinations. That works. Um, it's not really combinations. It's really just, for a given container, take a look at each type and say, okay, um, the, the types that I want to get into the container that's scattered about the other containers, is it even possible to swap out what's what's sort of the rest of the partition of the container with those other other balls, those other values. If you can swap all those out, then it's possible that this container could have um, one one val one you know could have all the balls in it for that particular number. Um, so you can figure out if that's true for all the possible types for that container, and you can do that operation on all the containers. Um, and that will take you quadratic time with respect to n. Now, what is what is the time bound they've got here? If you can do it in, there's 10 queries and 100 n, so you'd have 100 squared is, is 10,000 by 10 is 100,000. Yeah, that's fine. You can do this. Um, you can do this at 100% with, with quadratic time, I think. The tricky thing, though, is you're not done yet. Just figuring out what that matrix of, 
uh, possibilities are for each container isn't enough information. You can you can get that you know quadratic time. That's fine. Um, but the problem you face now is once you figured that out, what you need is can you Well, I guess it doesn't matter as long as as long as you have at least a one f per container, at least at least one positive. It's possible for each container that there's some type. You got to kind of do a um, what do they call that? Like um, you got to find that that there's a, there's some identity not identity, but like there's there's a there there are enough ones in that matrix of you know true false right and in that in that in that in that n by n matrix there's a, enough true false such that every um, row and column you can make sort of just exact you could sort of force that that is just that one there I don't know how to express that basically. find a pattern such that I don't know how you say that how you express it but basically every every column would have a one and every row would have a one and then for a given column n no other column would share the same row I guess that the one would be on and then similarly no row would share the same one on, on, on a different column. I don't know how to ex express it exactly. It's like, uh, how, do you, how do you express that? I got the idea though. Um, the challenge becomes, can you process that matrix? How does it work? It's like it's like it's like the queen's problem if you if you remember that the no, the except it would be like rooks. It would be given given this matrix of rooks. Can you cover every um, tile? Mm, on a chessboard. Uh, how does this work? Actually, I don't know. Even if you have that matrix, I don't know how easy it is to check if uh, if it works. Hmm, let me think about it. Well, the thing that's interesting is that the total number of, of values or elements in a given container will be constant no matter how much swapping you do. That's kind of interesting. Um, so what that implies... Is that maybe you don't need to do that much work here, actually, um, because the problem you run into is that even if you check, you know, you do this sort of brute forcing thing where you get quadratic time and you get all of these um, um, you get all these um, 
true and false, you know, for a given container. If it's even possible to fill that container with all of the all of the all of a certain type. Am I wrong about that? No, wait a minute. No, yeah, I'm right. Actually, it's correct. If that you, right, you swap, you move one in and move one out. Yeah. So even if it's if it's if it's possible for one container, you've now moved stuff all over the place. Um, for the next container. No, it doesn't necessarily matter because the the total number of balls that you're moving around in order to check that predicate you've got to see the total number of balls that are like the rest of the partition so to speak that's got to be exactly equal to the total number of balls spread amongst all the other other containers. And even if, let's say, you moved all the balls, right? So you moved everything around, and now this container satisfies the condition, and you move to the next container. The next container, maybe you moved some balls into it that weren't there before for the type that you're interested in. Um, but it may be possible that you didn't if you did move some balls in then naturally you had to have moved out um, the equivalent number of balls that you don't want for that particular so let's say it's worth considering so for we have type 1 in container A we, we moved all the balls around such that uh, type A so container 1 has all the, or um, container A has all of ball, the balls of type 1 and now if we consider container uh, B, then and type 2 in container B, all the balls that were moved, if if there were no balls moved, then it's as if we didn't even, even operate on, on container A, which is exactly what we want. Or um, if we did operate on A, then the predicate, actually the, the truth of the predicate is the same truth value because even if we did move balls in that we want, we would have necessarily had to move balls out that we don't want. Um, or alternatively, if we moved um, balls out that we did want, you know, balls of type two in or out, the it would affect the number of balls that we don't want. So then the check remains the same. So if we had one ball moved in, we had a ball we don't want one moved out, um, then we'd have one less ball to count amongst the ones we want, but also one less ball to count amongst the ones we don't want. So the equality would be the same um, if we didn't move anything at all, and vice versa. If we, if we, we moved a ball in that we don't want and moved a ball out that we do want, same thing, same, same, the truth value would be the same. So actually, you don't need to check every single container for every single possibility. Why don't you stream programming on Twitch? More people will watch. What's up, Michael Lynn? Hope your day's going well. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Um, it's not a bad idea, actually. I've been, I'm all over, I've been, I've been all over the place, but lately I'm, I'm starting to think maybe you're right. <laughs> uh, I could just stream it on Twitch and then put the video on YouTube. I think you're. I think you're right. I actually, agree with you on that one. By the way, welcome. Hello. Hope your day's going well. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome back. Um. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> I might. I might start doing that if I'm going to be be going going back to the programming streams. Excuse me. Um. So and finally. Um, so actually, with that, which I think we can actually prove that by, by induction, 
not even by induction, but we could, yeah, I guess by induction, we could use, we could suppose that um, we only need to check for a particular type for a particular container, and no matter what we do in terms of swapping, that'll always be true for that container. And so then, um, So we do want, now here's the question, now here's the question, does it matter which type we check for that particular container? Like let's say there's two different types that could work. It actually doesn't matter because if there's, if there are two, two types that work for a particular container, right? Let's say there's, um, you know, a set of balls of zero, a set of balls of one, and the ball is distributed amongst the other containers for zero um, that we want to put in, match the number of balls of one that are in the current container, container A, um, and so we could swap all of those balls out, um, and now we've got everything filled up with, you know, it was a type type zero, so it's type zero now is what we have in, in container A. Now all the balls are moved to other containers, all of the type 1 balls um, out of container A. It's possible that they got moved to... Hmm. No. I think I gotta come back to this problem. I think I got stuck. So I'm thinking it's... There may not be easy tricks. The, the easy tricks I'm looking for may not be as good as I'd like them to be. Um, hmm. Maybe as simple as a, as I thought, where you just suppose. Oh no 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 no! Actually no, I take it back. I take it back. No no no. The the proof that we just came up with is is, is perfect. What we want to do. So, okay, we do quadratic time. We find we we create this matrix of sort of true, false, or zeros and ones, where we say, okay, given a container, and then given a container and a type, whether or not you can. Um, swap all of the balls in for that type, for that particular container, if it's, it's possible or not. And then what you can do is you can just do a simple for loop over that, that um, array and say, okay, if you, um, if it's true that um, this container ha for a particular, in for a particular, is it quadratic time you do this? Basically you would say for a particular, uh, let's say column, which is a container, there's a certain, you know, certain, it's, it's either true or false for each row. So we can go through, iterate through the rows and say, if it's true, then we're going to recurse on the next um, column, right? And until I guess until we have, we get through all the columns. If we get through all the columns, we return true for the the whole function. Um, yeah. Is that quadratic time though? Mm. Well, you're going to operate on one less row, potentially, you can operate potentially n times on one less row. Hmm. No, that seems a lot worse than quadratic, actually. That seems like n raised to the n. That seems really bad. <laughs> it seems like a really ineffic inefficient way to do it. Mm, I don't know. 
I'm not sure now. Um, hmm. I think I gotta th come back to it, think about it a little bit more. It's gotta be every row has at least a one one in it, and then every column has at least one one in it, and the selection you pick for the rows don't have any like overlapping intersecting ones across the um, rows. So if you have two columns that have a one, then those ones aren't, aren't on the same row and vice versa. That's really what you're looking for. That property of the matrix, resultant matrix. You just need to check that property that, that at least at least one selection of ones in that matrix has that property where every column has a one in it somewhere in the column and the ones that you selected don't cross each other. That's not necessarily so obvious. I check that though. This is a pretty good question. It's an interesting question. Um, or at least how to check that efficiently. Well, checking it at all is maybe not so obvious either. Like some kind of backtracking certainly you can do. I think I was just describing that. Um, So you select the first run one from the first row or first column, and then select the next one from the next column, right, from top to bottom, and then select the next, select the next, and each time make sure that none of these overlap with each other on, on the rows, and then... Uh, if you don't have any other, op if you make it all the way through, you return true. If you um, only have an option that's conflicting, then you sort of backtrack. Um, it's sort of like the eight, eight, eight queens problem. It's very similar to like the eight, queen, eight queens problem. But the problem is, n could be a hundred by a hundred, and um, Exhaustive search like that could be expensive. Discovered this 88 minutes late to the party. What's up, Josh Relay? Relay, hope your day's going well. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Hey, man. <laughs> um, let me let me actually get going. I think I think it's time for me to get going. But uh, here's the problem. If you would like to take a read, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of rambling on about the. Um, about the, the potential solution. I actually don't even have a solution to this. I got kind of stuck. Um, yeah, I got kind of stuck. Uh, it's a very interesting problem, though. And yeah, unfortunately, the issue I ran into is well, it would take some explaining. I actually, have to explain it again. <laughs> Let me let me get going. I should go to sleep. Um, but this is an interesting problem. I haven't quite got the solution yet. I got a partial sol part of a solution. What I think you end up with though is hmm. oh man hmm. Hmm. 
wondering if you can do something funky with like Ga Gaussian Gaussian uh, or like some some sort of linear algebra manipulations. Maybe like move the matrices around, move the containers around. Right. Like moving the containers around would be still equivalent in terms of the properties that we're trying to to do to create. And so you can really just look for you know, can you move the containers around in such a way where you would end up with the identity matrix? That's, I think, easier to check than the other idea. Uh, although that would kind of draw an analog to the eight, eight queens problem. Um, I think, I guess. No, not really. It's not, it's not the eight queens problem. It's similar, but it's not the same thing. Um, or they see they're tenuously related. I don't think they're related as much as I'd like to think they are. Let me let me go. I gotta go. But but you do end up with um, hmm. Yeah, if you can do a kind of. swapping of the rows and columns after you've performed this calculation such that the identity matrix is present. Uh, huh. Interesting. Think about that. I guess what that would mean is that every column has at least a one somewhere in it. No, but the problem is that, right, exactly as described, is that you could end up where two rows, two columns uh, have a one, but the one is on the same row, and the only one is on the same row, which is not going to work. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got to be every column has at least a one, one, such that that one, no, it's not, it's not shared by any other, because you could have like four ones scattered where two ones are in one column, two ones are in another column, and then, the, and then One row of ones has on the same row, and the other row is the same ones in the same row, which ends up being uh, not a, an answer either. <laughs> Actually, no, it, it, it could be a possibility, but it's it um, would fail any heuristic that we came up with. I don't know, man. I'm stuck. I got stuck on it. I gotta think about it some more. Anyway, let me get going. I'll come back to this later, I think. So, thanks again for hanging out, saying hello. Um, um, I'll look it over. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah take a look. Take a look. Let me get going. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have a good rest of your night. Talk to you soon. Thanks for say, hanging out, saying hello. And yeah, man, I got stumped. Darn. I got stumped. <laughs> I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. Take care. <laughs>